All righty. Wake up, fellas. Let's go. We got episode 12 of the 204 Sports Show. I know, you, Joe, come on, man. Come on, Fine. man. It's a, it's a fight right now. It's right in your oh, face. It gives you more energy than that right there. I'm battling. I'm battling. Let's we do got it. that sports to talk about. So I got me, TJ Krowitz, Joseph Duffy, Courtney Machani. Um, we are the 214 Sports Show, and uh, let's get into the episode. So we got a lot to talk about, of course, as every week. Let's go ahead and start with on today's date of this uh, on today's date of Dallas sports history. This one's very recent, November eighth, twenty twenty two, just one year ago, but um, holds a, holds special to my heart because I loved I loved watching this game in my dorm. Uh, Luka Doncic scored thirty six points, becoming only the second NBA player ever with nine consecutive games of at least thirty points to begin the season. And the Dallas Mavericks beat the Brooklyn Nets 96-94 on Monday night. Dorian Finney-Smith scored 18 points, and Josh Green had 16 for the Mavericks, who rallied from a 14-point first-quarter deficit and won their fourth straight. Um, this was, of course, very early in the season last year. We still had hopes of making the playoffs and such. So it was a good win. and uh, I mean, it was Kevin Durant and Luka Doncic battle back and forth. So that was really fun. That was a really fun game. I don't oh, know if you know that. Was this the game where uh, Katie bricked that free throw, the free throw line? Yep. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, I don't remember this game, but I remember that. Yeah. I remember, I remember, this, I remember this game. You know, there's some teams that it seems like Luka always has their number with, like, certain situations. Like, the Celtics, he's always got their number with, like, you know, last-second shots. Same with the Nets now. And then, you, of course, you got the Stuns and Clippers where, you know, he just – Dominates them. That Nets game recently was crazy. Oh my that goodness, that Nets game. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that's like that's like prime Luka Magic right there. Like that's just like what I expect out of him. And when he shot that, I was like, yeah, that's going in. I got already knew. <laughs> I'd rather have him shoot that in an open shot. Mm-hmm. But anyways, the trivia I got goes with the on today's date. So I mentioned that Luca was the second player in NBA history to have nine consecutive games of at least 30 points to begin the season. So my question is, who was the first player to score at least 30 in their first nine consecutive games? And since there's so many NBA players, I'll give you a clue. Yeah, this, yeah I mean, it's like a, you know, it is like actually a really good player. Really prominent I player, so. I know who it is. is it, wait, can we get, uh, is it, are they active or are they retired? They're retired. Okay, I know who it is. I mean, there's only so few. Come on. It's got to be. It's got to be this guy. All right, all right. Maybe I gave you guys a little bit too many tips. Like, I was, I was trying to help out. No, there's a lot of great players. There's a lot of great players. <laughs> it's so tough. It's so tough. All right. Well. We'll answer that trivia question later in the episode. Let's get to our main talk of the Dallas sports teams. We'll start with the Cowboys this week. We haven't done that in a while since the Rangers have put a chokehold on the city for a couple weeks with their championship run. But the Cowboys, you know, they, they're going into midseason now, and they just had their loss to the Eagles in Philadelphia. It was a tough loss. Um, but, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. What are, you, what, are you, what are y'all's thoughts about the game? Well, for me, I mean, I wasn't, like, particularly, like, crazy upset. Uh, it's just some things didn't go our way. Was very upset in the last minute because that shows how winnable this game was. And once yeah. again, folks, the Dallas Cowboys have gotten in their own way. Once once again, you, get a, you have a miraculous drive with 40 seconds left to go in the game. All right, you have a chance to win the ball game on the road against a divisional rival to gain some ground in the, div- in the division race. You're at the seven yard line, false start, take sack, and then eventually you have like uh, what someone compared I heard a few days ago to the Titans Super Bowl play of 20 years ago, where you just wrapped up short of the goal line with CD getting the ball just about five yards short of what would have been the game winning touchdown. But you have the ball right there for the win, again for the um, the game changing score, and then once again stuff just gets in our way. 
And, you know, I don't want to act like this wasn't a winnable game because it very it very much was winnable. Even with all the penalties we faced in the quarters, even though some of them, you may argue, were not justified, even though we had some unfortunate circumstances with uh, tight ends being short of the goal line just by a few inches, you still had a chance. Football is a game of inches. You had a chance to win this ball game, and you just couldn't do it. And so for that reason... You know, it's not going to be the end of the world. The sun will come out tomorrow. This team still has a chance of being a playoff team, but that hurts your chances definitely for wanting to win the division race. Very upsetting loss. Not going to dwell on it for long, but such a winnable game to just slip through the fingers. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think literally what Joe said, like, they should have won that game. I mean, they outscored. I mean, not outscored. They outpaced the Eagles that whole game. Uh, they had like 400 something yards compared to like the Eagles 292. They uh, the time of possession was super close. They had about penalties. I mean, they're really neck on neck with the Eagles, and I mean, they showed that they could beat this Eagles team if it wasn't for. I mean, there's a couple of mistakes. I mean, the 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 inches from tight end he mm-hmm. couldn't score a touchdown right there. Dak Prescott stepping out of bounds on two point conversion. I mean, there are so many mistakes and just stuff that didn't go our way that could have won them the game. And so I think uh, this game comes with a lot of positives, uh, more to me than it does come with negatives. I think the uh, the McCarthy offense that we've been waiting for since, like, week one has finally showed his head the past two games. Um, and so I think Dak was the second leading passer in the uh, – in in the in the league last uh, last week, uh, obviously behind C.J. Stroud, and uh, I mean they're finally using C.D. Lamb. Uh, there's still some, I guess, running game I think they need to take care of. But to me, this loss isn't really too bad. I think it shows that they can keep up with the best of the best in the division. I think that if just a couple of things do go their way next time, then they they will win. I mean. I think they played the better game last last week at the, on uh, Sunday. I think they played the better game. And just things didn't go their way. I mean, yeah, I think they did play. I mean, I don't know if they were the better team, but they did perform better than I thought they were going to. I mean, but the thing is, is that this is just a typical Dallas Cowboys loss. You know, this is how they always pull us in. They always try to give us like this, you know, they always got the penalties. They always got the important holding call, you know, when we're in the red zone with an important second or third down, you know, you got the, you got the, uh, the way to lose. is just like, oh, who else but the Cowboys, you know, the, the knee half a yard short, of course, I had to turn my TV off with Greg Olson, man. He really repeated it like five times. He was like, look at this, look at this. This is what the Cowboys did. Look at it. I was like, nah, I can't do this anymore, man. I got to turn this off. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I guess looking at the glass half full, you know, you got the 49ers game a couple weeks ago, a road game against a competitive NFC playoff opponent, and we got destroyed. You know, it was 42-10, yeah, I think. Um, and the Cowboys just won the game at any point of the game. The Cowboys had a very, very, very good chance of winning this game this week. And, I, you know, in my opinion, I think the Eagles are the better NFC team over the 49ers right now. So, I mean, I guess you can say that it is, you know, it is a good step in the right direction. Um, it seemed like a lot of the Cowboys players weren't even that disappointed. I think this can really uh, – I, I don't know how I should feel about that. Uh, cause I feel like, you know, they should be disappointed, you know, yeah, my, and, and I guess, you know, they should be disappointed. They <laughs> lost to the Eagles. I mean, they, it's a loss. He said, uh, I'll you, I mean, you'd be more upset about this loss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So oh, that's pretty I'm just saying, you know, I want them to be like, man, I want to beat the crap out of them. But they're like, Hey, we played pretty good. I was like, okay, all right. You know, you know. Let us say that, not not you guys. But anyways, I don't know. Maybe it's Martavius Bryant gonna fix that. I don't know. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Man, this... <laughs> Out of nowhere, <laughs> the the crazy Jerry signing. We see this every year. I mean, who Martavius Bryant? We haven't seen this man playing since prime Big Ben in 2017, right? 
Playing with yep. Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. With the, the Raiders, yeah, right? In 2018, yeah. Then after that, he was oh. out the league. That's right. He was with the Raiders. But again, with this Cowboys team, like Terrence Steele possibly had one of like oh he possibly had the worst O line performance of the season. Uh, yeah, at least for the team. But he he struggled all day long. He's just getting destroyed on that right side. Penalties, ten penalties for 83 total yards. Eagles also had ten penalties, but the story again was. The red zone inefficiency, mm-hmm. All right? 406 total yards in the game. Defense only gave up 292 yards. They actually played pretty well. They just gave up touchdowns in the very end. But overall, the, the Eagles were not chopping them up by any means. It's just the red zone hurt. inefficiency. It was red zone inefficiency. We visited five times. Eagles visited three times and scored all three times. We visited five times, only scored three times. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, it's the same issue I mean, you have seen to think year. about. They, they had those two fourth down conversions on that first drive. We stopped them two times on that first drive. They were just able to keep going with the, you know, the tush push and all that. The, brother, the brotherly shove? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just an interesting team, this Dallas Cowboys team is. It's just. I mean, do y'all think that if you get to eat the Niners team that just lost two straight and you – Pair them up against this Cowboys team week, whatever week we're in. What you think is a different game than that uh, blowout? The thing is, it's a matchups. It's a matchups thing with us and the Niners and Eagles. We match up better with the Eagles because one, we're a divisional rival. We know them way better. But also, it's just that they're um, it's that their own line. They know how, like they know our weaknesses. Shanahan game game plans. Um, this defense some line because he knows that we're weak against the run, so he just goes right after it the whole game. Eagles, although they're not amazing against the run, they know how to at least stop a little bit better. That's why they play so much better, I think, against the, the Niners than we do. It's just a matchups thing because I don't think, like, again, if the Niners were to play the Eagles again, I think the Eagles would probably edge them again. It's just a matchups thing. To be fair, Brock Purdy was hurt last time. I don't want to act like Brock Purdy was slammed. But it's just a matchup thing. We just don't match up well with the Niners. Their defense just somehow always gets the better of us. Eagles defense, secondary is a little suspect still, in my opinion. Dak was, again, carving them up. So it's the same issue every year. The Eagles defense is it's good. The front seven has to dominate, though, because they, they sleepwalk in the first three quarters. Fourth quarter, they just they wake up, get the sacks. Well, did y'all like how Dak Prescott played? I mean, did, do y'all think that – I saw a lot of people online talking about either, you know, there's a lot of people still blaming him for this loss. So I, I want to hear what y'all want to y'all wanna think. What y'all think, sorry. You can go ahead, Corny. I mean, I mean, I hope his foot was a little smaller than that so he didn't have to step out of bounds. But, I mean, other than that, he played pretty much how we all been wanting him to play this whole year. I mean, what, 374 yards, or I think it was two touchdowns. Uh, he also used his legs a lot more, even though it was only like I think fourteen yards. He didn't get nowhere a lot, but he still ran six times. So I mean, he was finally showing like his all the tools that he has to to be like a top ten quarterback in this league. Because I think he he wants to prove that he is a top ten quarterback in this league. And these past two weeks, uh, he's been getting the chemistry with CD. I mean, their chemistry was a little shaky. Uh, coming off of last year, and especially at the start of this year. So I think now he has his number one receiver. He's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, right receivers are playing their roles. The rookies, uh, like Schottenheimer, is still, it's still a little here and there. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're trying to get more reps in. But I think you mean Schoonmaker. Or Schoonmaker, whatever. So I'm thinking about the – O.C. Seahawks, O.C., yeah, whatever his name is. <laughs> These are O.C., oh, but... R.O.C., R.O.C., yeah, R.O.C. But um, – I think they shot Follies to live on the rows. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael Gallup had also had like another bad performance. Um, but oh boy. yeah, other than that, I think Dak is finally tr- finding out who he can trust, like Jake Ferguson. So now he's finally finding out who he can trust. I think that he's going to continue to stretch. That whole not throwing less than 10 picks, it, it's not going to happen. But I think he's going to have a very good season for us this year. Yeah, he's got his random tight end that he's going to find every single time. <laughs> every single time. He's Re- finally respect, got it again. Respect Jake Ferguson, TJ. Respect Jake <laughs> Ferguson. And Luke's going to make it. 
Hey, if he has another good game, I'll respect him. Because... Did y'all see Dalton Schultz, bro, this past Sunday? Mm. Man. Man. Maybe they actually had someone in their, their nose, bro. <laughs> Too bad he can't block. He's got them sure hands now. He, he can go for 200 and receive him now, apparently. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I guess everybody in the AFC just didn't. You know, it's, we always, like, my dad and me used to always joke about, like, Cowboys tight ends and how they would always get open because, like, nobody knew who they were other than Wooden. You know, like Blake Jarwin. Yeah, like that three touchdown game against the Giants. Man, I always loved Jarwin, bro. I always, I never, <laughs> never hated him. He could run. He could run fast, bro. I loved him. Good. Just too <laughs> injury prone. Too injury prone. Yeah, Escobar, too, man. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Escobar. Oh, rest yeah, Escobar. in peace, bro. Rest That's in peace. That's a good one, man. That man, yeah. that man yeah. can play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. He can block a little bit, too. Oh, I'm yep. about Gavin Escobar. So the Cowboys go to 5-3 and three now. The Eagles are 8-1. and one. Two and a half games behind them now. But a lot of football left just early November. And the good thing for the Cowboys is that the next four out of their five games are at home. They've won 11 straight at home. And that last home game is the Eagles. So, they'll be, they'll be back. They'll be back, and we'll get a rematch. Um, we saw how that rematch went last year, that third and 30. Still remember that, man. I still I remember where I was exactly. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, what, what do y'all think about, uh, you know, the, the Giants game? I mean, obviously, this should be an easy win. Daniel Jones is out, but you never know with the Cowboys. Well, for uh, narrative's sake, <laughs> it won't matter. <laughs> Uh, you're coming off a loss that, I mean, that you should have won. Nobody's going to care if we win. They'll damn sure care if we lose. So um, this game, I don't think it'll be as dominant as the first one. 40-0 is just, if we somehow dominate these dudes even more, bro. I know Tommy DeVito will probably be starting, but it's going to be a rough day for him. It probably will. Coming off this loss, home went, home performance. We usually perform really good at home. This should be a blowout. I don't think it'll be a shutout anymore, though. I just It's hard to shut out a team twice in the season. No, right, so. it's a shutout. No, yeah, no. It's a so. uh, yeah, I think, I mean, this is pretty pretty much going to be a dominant victory. I mean, I don't see any holes in this Cowboys team that the Giants can't expose. I mean, there's teams in the conference that can't expose the holes that the Cowboys have, but the Giants are not one of them. I think it's going to be a very easy day for the Cowboys, especially being at home. I don't want to like uh, jinx anything, but I mean, they they better be if they beat if they lose to the Giants, the season's over. I mean, they already lost to Josh Dobbs. That was enough. But I think looking ahead, I don't want to look ahead. But I mean, these Giants are pretty pretty yeah. So you can't look ahead. I mean, they also have the Panthers coming home, coming to uh, Arlington. Uh, I think the Seahawks are coming to Arlington. The Commanders are coming to Arlington. I mean, these are games that they can pretty much run the table on. At this home stretch, so I think they could come out this home stretch five and zero. Um, I mean four and zero going into that Eagles game, and I, we'll see what happens during the Eagles game. But this team is still set in a good point. Yeah, I would have said that the division is completely out of the out, out of the question right now because it's. I mean, it's two and a half games. Um, you, you look at how the Eagles have won all their games; it's all been by one. One, maybe two scores, you know, and I I don't want to say that they're getting lucky, but they're definitely getting by. Um, and so, you know, if the Cowboys can get this quick run and, you know, I, I'm, can, can you all tell me who we're playing on this homestand? I know it's the I know it's the Giants and then we got the uh, Panthers, Commanders, on the Commanders on the 23rd. Oh, yeah. No, this is like Seahawks on the 30th. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a yeah. We need to we need to have those those normal AT and T stadium games against mediocre teams where we go for forty points and make them turn the ball over like five times. My that's what we need. My Thanksgiving is against Washington again. Oh I know, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to watch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Zach yeah. Davis will be intolerable <laughs> until the yeah, final yeah. score is thirty-five to six. It'd be crazy, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it seems like y'all are still pretty confident in the Cowboys. I, I'm pretty confident in them too. Um, I'll reiterate that. I just don't. I, I don't know how you can. 
it, it's just the Cowboys, the way they lost to the Eagles is just the way that they always lose years before. Just like, man, it's the same squad. I, I don't know if I should be faked out by them. I don't know. I, I'm really 50-50 on this Cowboys team right now. Is it just like, I, I, can't, I can't trust them. I can't trust them. And I never will be able to trust the Cowboys team ever again. So you weren't, you weren't able to trust the Rangers. That boy is broken. Oh, of course I was never able to trust the to trust the Rangers, man. So, but look, know, hey, awesome, at this man. point, awesome. what can happen? That's a good, that's a good transition. That's a good transition. Hey, let's talk. Let's talk real quick about the Rangers, man. I don't. First of all, I don't care what the hell anyone says about the parade. Screw all of them. Hey, I had a great time. They also were really late. That that sucked. I mean, I was really pissed off at a second. Yeah, it was. My, okay, uh, let me let me come down to earth real quick. It was pretty disappointing, but yeah. I did have a lot of fun regardless. <laughs> and I mean, you know, just uh, it's just cool to see the World Series trophy, see Bochi and Dolis and all of them. And I mean, uh, pretty pretty crazy, pretty crazy uh, day. We had somebody go on top of the the street light. And he was, like, on the horizontal part. And I think it was on Dallas, Texas TV, that Instagram part. But it was on the horizontal part. Or not the horizontal, sorry. Uh, the diagonal. No, horizontal part, sorry. And he was, like, he had no, like, no hands, you know. He wasn't holding on to anything. And he was, like, leaning back and forth. I was, like, this dude's about to fall. Like, I was recording. I was, like, I'm ready to, like, you know. I'm ready to post this on Instagram Reels and get, you know, go viral, man. Like, I was saying. <laughs> He came down and his hands were like all sliced up like crazy. I was, I could have, but I had a great time. I was thinking to myself, man, I was like, damn, what was it? 700,000 people there in Arlington. It was crowded as hell. There was no place to walk. I mean, I was like, just imagine if it was the Cowboys, man. I just imagine that parade in Arlington if it was the Cowboys. 700,000 just for the Rangers. Yeah, the Cowboys, millions. You think we will be there. Ar- At least, like, oh, what's up? You think, you think Jerry would do it in Arlington? Or... I feel like he would, but I wouldn't I be surprised know. if he puts it in somewhere else. I'm sure the Arlington mayor will make sure that it stays in Arlington. I think that's what he did with the Rangers. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. We'll see, but I mean, so we got the Rangers too, you know, they're going into their off season and, you know, there's actually a lot of reports about the possibility of sh- sh- signing Shohei Otani. Um, so let's, let's try to be realistic here, guys. This is the Texas Rangers. And even though we've signed a couple big names in the past couple of years, it's the Texas Rangers. All right. We can't act like we're top dogs here, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What free agents do y'all think we have the best possibility of signing? Hey man, look, let's just let's just stay excited. Let's stay optimistic, TJ. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know, man. I can't here's, do it. Man. Here's the thing. This is not like the old, like old, old Rangers. In my opinion, we have been on Shohei Otane since his high school days. We have a good relationship. That's with him. true. He, he mm-hmm. knows us very well. So. Again, like I said before, what better pitch than to being a World Series roster? Um, if you come to this team, we'll help you go to the playoffs. We'll help you actually finally reach your postseason goals and aspirations of being a champion in the MLB. The thing with this team is that we really don't need them. It's not the end of the world if we don't get them. It would be nice. It would be an absolute jolt to this lineup. But the thing with Otani is that we've been on him, like I said, since – his high school days, we almost had him. We were, you could argue we were probably second in the running to get him. The reason why we didn't get him initially is because we didn't want him to pitch. And he wanted to be a two-way star. And so the Angels said, you know what, we'll let you hit and pitch like you prefer. Ended up going to the mm-hmm. Angels. Probably will be different this time around. Being paid uh, as much as he's going to be paid, he's going to get the bag regardless of any team he's going to. And you look at the teams that are being in the running – Obviously, the Dodgers, they're also a great contender that he could go to. I think that will be more likely uh, to happen, honestly. But I just don't understand, like, the hype to the Giants. I know they will pay him probably the best amount. But their team is just, they're not nearly as good as, say, us, the Dodgers. And now, from yesterday, the Cubs are actually in the running, believe it or not. So, when I look at this, I say, yes, there's a chance 
I don't think we need him, though. That's the problem. For free agents, though, I want us to get Josh Hader from the Padres to uh, help our bullpen a lot. I cannot go another year seeing more bullpen saves. I mean, uh, blown saves, I should say. Because it was a rough watch. I know they clicked at the end, but I want us to be a more sure team that doesn't have as much scare. So I want us to go really target bullpen this offseason. Josh Hader should be our number one target. That's fine, man. I know that's going on the reels. <laughs> I know that's going on the reels. He went off there. Nah, yeah, yeah, you took my answer, answer too. I was gonna, I was gonna pick Hater. <laughs> I know Courtney's like, yeah, that was, that was scripted. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> for you, TJ. I, I, y'all gotta give me some leeway, man. I mean, free agents. I, I ain't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't there yet. So you, you can pick anyone else. Hey, you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, you see, I really do think that Cheryl Otani is, yeah, I mean, with Joe, it's like, I, I don't think it's, you know, I'm going to be that angry if we don't get Shohei. I'd love to get Shohei. And, and to think that, you know, it, it's more the fact that, like, I, I really do like winning winning championships, obviously, but I like doing it with the homegrown talent and being able to, you know, watch players grow. You just, you know, it was like buying a team now. We're getting the number one payroll with Shohei Otani because he's going to get the ma- biggest contract in MLB history. So, I mean, you know, the Arlington citizens really want to pay for that. I don't know. But um, <laughs> if it's championships, I don't think they care. <laughs> I, oh. The Arlington City Council don't care, that's for sure. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, I do really like Josh Hader as an option. I mean, I, I think that would be the most helpful, most impactful free agent that's not on our team because, um, you know, you look at, of course, the bullpen. I don't think a role as Chapman's going to come back. Um, and I don't think I, many Rangers fans are even going to really want him back at this point. How he struggled a little bit with getting players out um, at the last part of the season. Um, and, you know, Leclerc is a good option, but you never know. He's been so on and off over the years, so on and off. He's had injury problems. He just caught fire at the right time. Got to respect him for that. But you're looking at, you know, we need a lockdown closer, and Josh Hader's definitely that person. I mean, he's been that guy for like four or five years now. Everybody knows him. He's a top-notch closer. So that would definitely be the most impactful free agent signing for them. Aaron Nola would also be another one. But I think Aaron Nola would be a great pickup if we lose who I think is the most the, – the free agent we need to get prioritized is Jordan Montgomery. Montgomery. And, of course, I'm saying Jordan Montgomery. I mean, first of all, he's a Yodon killer. I mean, he knows how to pitch against Yodon. That's a big factor. You know, we need that, especially if we see the Astros again in October. Um, and, of course, you know, just – his 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 stuff is just so good. Um, I really can't, you know, he was the only consistent starting pitcher on our team last year that could get out. You're talking about, I mean, Montgomery had good starts. He never had more than two bad starts in a row. I mean, Scherzer at least had that. Evaldi even had that. You know, so, I mean, he was definitely probably, I would call him the most valuable pitcher of our team this season, even though he was on our team for less than half the year. Hmm. Because he really had that big of an impact, in my opinion, and we need to keep him. Yeah, so, I have yeah. to agree a lot with Montgomery. For lefty sake, too, if we need a good lefty starter uh, yeah. besides Heaney. I think Heaney's coming back. But Monty, I, I definitely agree. He's definitely going to be up there in the priority list. We We can't let him go. He was... Possibly, like you said, our most valuable pitcher in the lineup. Probably our best trade acquisition, too. So, um, that was a really good pickup. Very good find by Chris Young. I like both those answers from us and from us combined. Yeah, I think, I mean, you go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I mean, yeah, Jordan Montgomery. I mean, you're looking at you're looking at a starting lineup with no lefties other than Heaney and Perez, and I'm sure Perez is gonna be going too. Perez is out of here. Uh, hopefully, no disrespect to him, though. No disrespect. Res- no, respectfully, he's out of here. Yeah, respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, did you want to say something, Courtney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to. Uh... I'm still going to go say, hey, we need to sign Josh Hader. Um, 
I can't tell you why we didn't sign Josh Hader. I mean, I was like, oh, the bullpen, the bullpen from an outside, like from a basic point of view, uh, the bullpen uh, was our weakest point of the season. And if Josh Hader fixes the bullpen, like you guys say, Josh Hader fixes the bullpen, and I'm all for it. I mean, I'll, I'll buy his jersey if he fixes the, what, what we need to get fixed. <sighs> Uh, nah, I wouldn't do that. But yeah, no, on the other hand, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shohei Otani, uh, I mean, Corey Seager wanted to play. I mean, Corey Seager no Shohei Otani, but Corey Seager did want to play for us. So I think I think the Rangers, in terms of being like, I guess, a big market, uh, I think I think DFW is kind of making a name for itself in the markets of like big names. I think we've had a couple of rumors with Dallas. Some people wanted to come to Dallas. I mean, the Mavericks. We got some, I mean, the Cowboys is kind of a Jerry Jones thing, more is like the DFW thing. And then I think the Rangers, I mean, um, we we once signed uh, A-Rod. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know what the French sure. is with, with signing A-Rod, but we did once sign A-Rod. So, I mean, they've had Rangers are good at their own money. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't know how much Shohei or prioritize money, but from all the rumors I have seen, he does want to get that bag, and the Rangers have a bag to throw. It's unfortunately going to come out of my uh, parents' uh, tax, but <laughs> they do have a bag to throw. So, I mean, if Shohei wants to, I mean, the rumors have to be like, have some type of like, they have to have some type of like, lean, like they, they have to mean something. So, I think the Rangers getting Shohei could be real. Uh, and they'll just be like a super team. And I, I think we've been waiting to see a super team in uh, DFW for a long, long time. So I, I want it to happen. And I'm going to be optimistic and I'll say it's going to happen. I'm going to call Free it. agency right. starting today. Starting today. All right. I like it. I like it. I didn't know free agency was already starting. I saw the Red Sox were talking to Jordan Montgomery. I was like, I thought that was tampering. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was tampering. I didn't know they could do that. I wouldn't be shocked if these dudes let Montgomery go after, like, how he just changed our rotation. There's just no way. If he goes for the money, I completely respect it. I mean, that's, you know, he got his bag. He got his bag. He proved it in the postseason. So, I mean, that's just what happens with baseball. You know, you don't don't re-sign rentals too often. That's the problem. But, um... I don't know, just to, just to end off with the Rangers, though, before we stop talking about them for a couple weeks, before we probably get a free agency overview or recap, uh, I do want to say that I think the real MVP of the Rangers is the stadium, the stadium itself. Hmm. And I think that's the only reason why we can call ourselves world champions now, because without that, we're not signing Seager, and we're not signing Simeon, probably. That's all with the new stadium. So I do want to point that out real quick. That stadium is Seager loves that stadium, man. Seager does love <laughs> that stadium. <laughs> Otani so, also loves that stadium too. That, that's gonna factor. I'm telling you, it will factor. I've seen him hit a home run. He, in I've seen stadium. him too hit a home run in that stadium. He mashes at this stadium. I mean, he this does is, mash it. Very hitter friendly park. Mm-hmm. So definitely for lefties. Yeah. Um, so, anyways. Let's move on to the Mavericks real quick. Just real quick, since they're six and one, uh, I don't want to talk about the Stars. Uh, they're they're on a losing skid. They're not looking too good, but it's it's all right. Um, they, they'll be back in it eventually. Long season, eighty two games. But the Mavericks, at least for their first part, is six and one. They are six and one, and um, uh, so I mean. Had a lot of good performances. Um, of course, those six wins are against teams that did not make the playoffs last year, I believe. But, I mean, you, you take what you can get. Uh, the narrative last year was that the Mavericks couldn't beat bad teams. And now the narrative this year is that the Mavericks can't beat good teams. So, you know, you take what you get. What are, you, what are y'all thinking? I mean, I, let me ask you guys this question. What player have you liked the most this season that's not named Luke or Kyrie? For me, it has been Grant Williams, and I just I'm I'm amazed at what he's doing right now. We finally have a good three and D acquisition again, who can also just light it up from the corner and from the wing. Uh, he can mm-hmm. defend bigs, he can defend guards. Um, he's just performing very well right now. He's I believe eighth in the league in um, three point uh, three point three pointers per game. Right now, believe it or not, Luka is second behind Curry right now at 30 points per game, which is crazy. But Grant Williams has just been amazing in the starting lineup so far. I'm loving his defense. I'm loving his energy. 
I'm also loving his leadership and trying to keep Luca in check and not let him just get these texts uh, every single game and trying to at least keep our leader in a emotional check. So I'm loving how uh, he's bringing his energy, this maturity to the game, even though he's really not even that old. He's a veteran in the NBA, but you know he carries himself yeah. like he's been in the league for a decade. So I love what he's doing. We have a, a legit three and D specialist now who's a little bit better than what Dorian Finney-Smith was for us in the past. Uh, he's a consistent mm-hmm. three-point shooter, uh, brings fire in the starting lineup. I'm really loving Grant Williams. That's good. I mean, hey, at least he's not standing on business with the conference, though. I mean, he uh, well, I guess he did stand on business with the Eagles jersey, but that pissed me off. That was crazy. <laughs> that pissed me off. That was crazy. Uh, I think he's in the uh, in later in one of the questions that you have, but I'm going to have to go with Derek Lively. I mean, mm-hmm. I think, like, he talked about staying on business. The first game that he <laughs> no, on but... business with, with one of the yeah, Eagles. Yep, on the British process in the past 20 years. So I think he definitely showed that he – he has a place in the league. I mean, he's been playing his role to perfection. Already, he's made this team a very defensive team as soon as he stepped on the court. And every time he steps on the court, the team gets better off uh, defensively. Offensively, we do go down a little bit just because just cause of the way that he interacts with the guards and everything. But we, we're still a pretty good offensive team in general. And he, I mean, he plays the pick and roll perfectly. He, he is defending pretty much the best big every night. Um, he didn't do the best against Jokic, but always against Jokic, he's a rookie. That's going to that's gonna happen. He's going to have those growing pains. But other than that, I love the way Derek Lively plays. He brings more energy to his team. The chemistry is perfect. He just flips, sits in perfectly. And we don't have to play a certain certain big uh, more minutes than we have to. So, Derek Lively. <laughs> oh, we know. I was about to say it. But, you oh, know. We know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like those two answers. I would have picked. I, I probably would have picked Derek Lively over Grant Williams just because of the Eagles jersey. But I was I was gonna pick him mm-hmm. before I saw that. Uh, but you know, for me, I'm gonna go with Tim Hardaway Jr. and I'm gonna go with him just because I'm really impressed with him. Of course, it's a small sample size, but coming from a, a really diehard Mavericks fan for the last couple of years as well, and he's been on this team for a very long time. I know what we try to do with Tim Hardaway Jr. at the start of the year. We always try to start him on the bench. He sucks. He he does horrible. He shoots like under 30% from three. And then we put him in the starting lineup, and he does amazing. Um, and so, you know, we set him off the bench again this to, at the start of the season, and I was expecting him to get to a slow start. No, I mean, he was averaging over 20 points per game. I think he's at 18 points per game now. He's shooting about 39% from three. Um, he hasn't missed a free throw yet. He's shooting his best shooting percentage since he's been with the Mavericks. Um, he's also had the most rebounds since he's been with the Mavericks. Overall, he's done really, really good. Of course, a small sample size, only seven games, but I've really liked to see him having a scoring burst. And, you know, he, he's, he's one of those streaky shooters, you know. He's going to be inconsistent at times. He's going to have those games where he scores six points and goes three for 15 or two for, you know, two for 12. But, I mean, in the end, he's, he's shown that he's, you know, he's more consistent than inconsistent um, with his good games, I think. So, that's what I got to say. Um, but the, the Mavericks will play the Raptors tonight. We'll know the uh, result once, um, once this is uploaded. Um, another team that's most likely probably not going to make the playoffs. Um, so, we just got to keep getting, you know, keep, uh, keep winning these games and, uh, you know, screw the narrative. So but, a player uh, on that Raptor squad that uh, some Mavericks fans uh, want to acquire too, Pascal oh, Siakam. Uh, Siakam, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm more of a OG and an OB guy, but I guess he kind of sucked last year. So OG, <laughs> good old OG. You remember when uh, Kevin Durant was like, "Yeah, this guy's gonna be like special." Yeah, yeah. I love to He's see been that. Having that moniker for like years now. Yeah, I thought he was really nasty. <laughs> Yeah, people really did he's think good. he's going to be a different kind of monster. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's just like borderline all star if the if the Raptors are like top four seed. That's where he's at right now. 
I hope he does good, though, man. He's, I have no reason to root against him. So let's go into our, uh, our betting lines for the game against the Giants real quick, wrap things up. We're going to start off with Dak Prescott like we always do. This one's always a great one to uh, uh, debate about. Dak Prescott, his throwing yards. We have him at 256.5 throwing yards for the Giants. Do you guys think he goes over or under here? <laughs> I'm going up. I'm going over. This man is about to feast against this sorry defense. He is going <laughs> over. At home as well. This is gonna this is gonna be a Molly Whopping. Gee, it's gonna be bad, y'all. Over Molly Whopping. <laughs> There's no way this team struggles this Sunday. I just refuse to believe it. Uh, nah, Molly Whopping is a good one, bro. <laughs> I think. I mean, I think I don't remember if we did bad lines the week that uh, the Monday Night Football week. I'm pretty sure we did, but um, I mean, he's been going over recently, so I'm gonna go over again. I mean, I don't see why not. I think he's good. He's going to stand on business again. again. He's going <laughs> to drop 300, bro. He's Damn. Gonna show, he's going to show who he is. So I, I'm going to go over on that. I'm gonna go over. Yeah, Damn, man. I was going to go under. I was going to try to disagree, but you said stand on business. I got to go over <laughs> now, man. We got to go sweep. Business. I gotta go sweet, man. Dak, yeah, I'm going over. He's going to feast. He's going to be spanking the Giants, man. Let's go into Tony Pollard, though. Tony Pollard, 73 and a half rushing yards. Over or under? You know, Tony's been, been a little underwhelming this year. The run game hasn't done yeah. him any favors. The, the run blocking just hasn't been there. But, you know, it's the Giants. I'm not expecting them to have this great run deed today. I think we're going to attack the edges more and not exactly run up the middle. I think Tony can get that just over, but I don't think he's going to have a great rush day by any means. It was the line again? 73 and a half for rushing. I think he can get that. I mean, I think it's. I think we need to have a comfortable conversation about Tony Pollard, but that's not the, it's not the week for us to have that conversation. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think, yeah, it's just been, it's been weird with him. I don't know. It's something about that run game. That's just, we will start game. a dialogue. Yeah, it must be a dialogue starting. <laughs> But I think I think he can hit over just because it's a Giants team that really isn't um, anything special. I don't know how much rushing yards he had uh, the Giants game, but I don't think he really did that much during that Giants game, if I remember correctly. But I think he I think he hit a little over like a, like seventy five or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go I'll go under this time. The disagree. Um, I really don't know how you can really predict how Tony Pollard's going to do this game because it seems like this is a game where he should be doing good, we should be up, we should be running the ball. Um, but, again, he also has been underwhelming. I've been expecting a lot more from him this year. Um, I think this is going to be more of a defensive game for the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are going to get their defensive turnovers and their touchdowns from the defense. You know, Dak, I think, is going to attack them through the air quickly, get them out of the game quickly, and – you know, I don't think he gets over 73 and a half yards. But anyways, real quick before we get into C.D. Lamb, I do want to say Otani next team odds just dropped by DraftKings, and the Rangers are sixth on the list. Sixth? What? Sixth. What? Um, uh, plus 850. The Dodgers are first at negative 110, um, which is no surprise there. The What's Giants the are second. Um, tied for third are the Mets and the Mariners. Stop, stop it. Stop it, dude. He it's is not going to think Seattle Seattle He's going to want to go Mets. stay on the West Coast. It's because everybody says he's going to oh. want to stay on the West Coast. Oh, my God. And then the Yankees are over us. They say, they say, they say Texas is becoming the new I think it's pretty wild. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> come on. You know where to come, Shohei. We, come on. Hey, you know what to do. What are we doing here? Seattle, are we serious? Seattle? <laughs> yeah, DraftKings is. Hey, hey, I was just saying, man, bet Rangers, you can get some good money, man. I will, be, uh, I will be putting my bet on the Rangers. So let's go CD Lamb now. He's got 83.5 receiving yards over or under. He's been doing really good connecting with Dak a lot. So what do y'all think? He's been feasting in the last three games 117 against the Chargers, 158 against the Rams, 191 against the Eagles. Last time he played the Giants, those 77 yards, four catches. That was that was when he was a little bit upset a little bit about uh, his usage. So I think, like you said, TJ, it's going to be a defensive game where they're going to like have these crazy touchdowns and turnovers. I don't think CD actually has a crazy game, believe it or not. So I think he goes a little bit under. I'm going to go under here. 
Was uh that game he just had against the Eagles? Is that his like best? Uh, is that his most uh, receiving yard in his career? Or not? Yeah, I don't. I can't remember him I getting near hundred one ninety. It could be. I don't know. Uh, didn't he have that for the Patriots overtime game? Didn't he go crazy for that? I can't remember. Yeah, was it one ninety? What? One ninety? I don't think it was one ninety though. Nope, this was his best all time. Best all time. Look at that. Yep. I mean, I think I don't see why he doesn't. Uh, he, won't, he won't repeat one ninety, but I don't see why he doesn't just continue the hot streak. I mean, maybe he could start what AJ Brown did finish. He could go on that one hundred twenty five plus. It's uh, that one hundred twenty five plus yard uh, receiving uh, like what seven games? I think he could start. Uh, well, that would be his third if he does something crazy against the Giants. So uh, I think it's going to be another good performance by CeeDee Lamb. I'm going to go over. Yeah, two games over 100 yards. I do think that they put some emphasis on C.D. Lamb after what he was complaining about after the first game. So give me over. I don't know if it's over 100 yards. I don't know if it's over 125. But I will say over 83 and a half. Let's go into something that we haven't done. Um, switching it up a little bit. Let's do an over-under on an opponent. But I say one Barkley, 70 and a half rushing yards. That's three yards short of Tony Ballard. What do y'all think? Are y'all going over or under for Saquon here? We usually uh, have Saquon at bay for the most part. Uh, last time we played him, I mean, it's not his fault. His own line is just its just not good. Yeah. Uh, last time we played him, he had 51 yards off 12 carries. Uh, it's been an interesting season for Saquon, but I'm, I'm going to say he's going to be under that again. It's just its very hard to run with that online line, man. They don't do you any favors. I really hate it for him because I love him out of college, but I don't think he's getting above seventy and a half. That's going to be under for me. Uh, he's, I mean, he's Saquon. Yeah, I mean, no one paid attention to the Giants, but if you pay attention to the Giants just a little bit, Saquon has been running. He hasn't run these past couple of weeks ever since he came back from his injury. It seems like he didn't really lose much from the season from that injury. So, I I can see Saquon getting seventy, especially because they got to lead on the run game a lot more. Um, off of the injury to both their QBs. So I'm, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. Uh, I don't think he's going to have like a 100-yard game, but I think, he, I think he can get some 70. Yeah, I could see him getting a, you know, having a good game, having a couple good drives. I, I don't know if I would say over 70 again just because – uh, you know, I don't know if you could consider that a good game for Saquon, but I mean, I would say it's a good game against the, you know, against the Cowboys if you got like the sixty yards. You know, that's something. Uh, I mean, yeah, the Cowboys. What Joe mentioned, I mean, it seems like the Cowboys usually seem to keep him in bay, and it does have to do with the O line, and it's just our our front seven. It's just it just matches up well against the Giants. So um, I'm I'm gonna have to go with under with that too. So. I'll do it for the uh, the betting lines. Let's get to the trivia answer, guys. Uh, give me your answers for the trivia. I'll say it again real quick, though. It was, who is the first player in NBA history to have nine consecutive games at the start of the season scoring over 30 points? It's kind of an ESPN stat, and I did get it from ESPN. So You said it was active or retired? You said it was active? No, they are retired. To start the personally. season, it's got to be Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Kobe. I'm going That's Kobe. Go got to be. You're going Kobe? Y'all, y'all don't want to go different answers? R.I.P. R.I.P. Okay. Okay. I, I had Kobe originally when I – That's why I asked actor to retire because I thought Kobe. Um, but, I mean, Jordan would do something like that too. I mean, I think Kobe's more the, the shooter. But Jordan would do something like that. So, you know what? I'll be devil's advocate. I'll go Jordan, that gambler. All right. Drew <laughs> The gambler. All right. Well, the answer is Will Chamberlain. Oh, oh my God. I, right under our nose. Mike, I, That's crazy. Um, Will Chamberlain, y'all. That might have been the easiest answer ever. Really? Huh? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, you can think about it. I mean, Will Chamberlain was a monster like that. Where, I mean, where's the 100 point video, Will? Where is it? We need to see it. We need to see the footage. Where is it? There's no footage. I'm telling you, it didn't happen. I'm telling <laughs> you, this, this stat could be false, too. They got everything hey, except that. I heard the stat keep The Will Chamberlain even <laughs> exist. <laughs> no, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> got everything except that video, bro. Yeah, exactly. They got like foot. I remember seeing like the- there's like footage of like the NBA in the forties and stuff, and they're like they got footage of this, but they don't got the footage of the hundred. 
they, 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 they had audio of it. Like, oh yeah, you could easily replicate that. <laughs> Come on. A little, add a little static. Yeah, add a little <laughs> static. Get a get an old white dude. And be like, oh my god, what Cameron? A hundred points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, they put that. They thought they were putting the honey on a on a, on a note card. They thought that they could guess what honey was. <laughs> 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 they were they, they were, they were miles ahead of their time, bro. They handed that paper to Will. They were like, hey, bro, hold this. He was like, what's this? Like, yeah, you don't know, man. This will do crazy numbers in the newspaper. <laughs> Hold this up. And the church of what are they going to do? Check Bleacher Report to see the scores, see the stats? Like, they're gonna, where are they going to go? They could tell people he scored 200 and they still believe it. <laughs> yeah, they would. They don't have that Twitter. So, anyways, we're here in the 50 minutes. I got to go to class in a couple minutes. So let's go. Let's, let's end this episode off. This was a great episode. Uh, y'all go ahead, plug in your socials real quick before we head out. Yeah, you can follow me at, uh, at Joseph underscore Duffy 99 on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> at Joseph underscore Duffy 99 on Instagram and Twitter. Same handle for both. Would love for you to support the brother. Follow, up, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am there. I have a lot, a lot of solid sports takes. Follow. You said you said you want you want to support. They want to support, brother. That's what she said. No, they, you, they so you can't support a brother. Oh, so you can't. Hey, they they need to support me too. Come on now, my Twitter right here. C underscore with Um Instagram. Uh, C lives the life. You know, not not not. Uh, I know, uh, not all this stuff. C lives the life. Just remember that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, pass on to TJ. All right, Instagram, tj.crowitz. Twitter is tj underscore crowitz or x. I don't know. Um, I always forget, man. Um, mm. And, uh, of course, you can follow the 214 Sports Show on Twitter slash x and Instagram. You can also follow us on TikTok. It will always be at 214 Sports Show. Um, we're also on YouTube and Spotify. You can follow us there uh, or on either and uh, once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in for this week's episode. Hopefully, we'll have a Cowboys victory to talk about next week and some good victories from the Mavericks and Stars. But again, that'll be us from the 214 Sports Show. Y'all have a great rest of your week.